In September 2015, our CSWN cover story featured cardiology's fantastic journey into miniaturization. One of the devices we discussed at that time was the Zeo patch for continuous cardiac monitoring, and the technology is making it easier to get 14 days worth of ECG data. Investigators are now analyzing more and more Zeo data to try to learn more and more about AF. So uh, an interesting new paper is being presented here at HRS 16, and to talk about it, let me introduce you to Dr. Alan Goh, who is director of the Comprehensive Clinical Clinical Research Unit for Kaiser Permanente, mm -hmm. uh, Regional Medical Director of Clinical Trials there at the Permanente Medical Group and an Associate Professor at the UC San Francisco as well as Consulting Professor at Stanford. Uh, what I would like to start with is this was a, on the cover and it's a great technology. Just remind us what the Zeo patch does. Certainly. So the Zeo patch is a non-invasive lead wire free single patient use ECG monitoring device. It's applied to the chest just like a large band-aid and it actually collects up to 14 days of continuous beat to beat uh, ECG data for a patient. It's also very convenient because after you take it off, you put it in a mailer and send it back to iRhythm to get analyzed to see uh, whether or not there are different arrhythmias that occurred and also patterns of arrhythmias. So patients like it because it's not as, as uh, obtrusive into their life as, as other technologies. It's pretty small. And you guys like it because it gets you a lot of data. That's right. So it's a lot easier to use than things like the Holter monitor or yeah. vent loops where you have to wear things and attach them and can't go into the shower and things like that. So what we really like is that we, people can wear them continuously for up to two weeks. And as you said, we get lots and lots of information about these arrhythmias. So what are you presenting here? So our interest was around the issue of atrial fibrillation, which is a very potent risk factor for ischemic Jeez, stroke. Yeah. And uh, we've been struggling for decades to help us identify which patients are at high enough risk for ischemic stroke with atrial fibrillation that we should put on to lifelong blood thinners, either warfarin or the newer oral anticoagulants. And uh, despite our best efforts, we still know we can improve on that. And so one of our questions has been in the area is, well, what if you're in atrial fibrillation a longer or shorter period of time? Does that actually influence the chance of having an ischemic stroke? And that's what our study was about. So you're calling it burden of AF, really? That's right. So the burden of AF we define as the, basically the amount of time that you spend in AF, in this case during the 14-day monitoring period using the Zeo patch. And what did you find? We actually found that for every doubling of the AF burden, that is for every doubling of the time you spent in AF, there was a 33% increased risk of having a stroke off of a blood thinner. So burden is really a major issue that maybe we hadn't been thinking about before? Yes, I think that it's been where we haven't really had the technology to be able to characterize uh, the burden that people experience, at least for the general person with atrial fibrillation, because they don't usually get these implanted devices. Instead, this is one that they can do non-invasively. And, and also, what was interesting is that it seemed to be independent of other known risk factors for stroke and atrial fibrillation. And that was a surprising but very important finding. So in other words, if you use the CHADS, or CHADS2, CHADS2 VASC, if you use that, this could actually provide more information and indicate a higher risk, somebody you really need to think about the oral anticoagulation. Yes, so exactly right. That The existing stroke scores, Atria, CHADS VASC, and CHADS, can only get us so far. And that we can actually believe that this kinds of technology can help us to better identify the person that's going to have an event versus someone who doesn't. And that's going to help us personalize the decision about stroke prevention strategies. Because you're getting so much data, what are you going to do next? I mean, goodness knows there could be a lot of uh, studies done here. What are yes. you interested in looking at? So there's a number of areas. One is we want to continue to uh, increase the number of people that we look at to make sure that we're right about this. And we're also going to encourage other groups to do the same. Uh, also, we're interested in understanding what are the other kinds of things you collect off this device that may help also improve our ability to predict the risk of stroke in people who have atrial fibrillation. And also, soon to understand why do some people stay in a longer versus shorter period of time. Because that may help us also determine who's going to benefit from other kinds of things like rhythm control, ablation, or other kinds of forms of reducing the burden. And that ultimately will be a great question to answer is, if you reduce the burden of AF, do you actually reduce the burden of stroke? Well, I thank you for your time here, because like I said, we had a cover story on this issue. So a cover story update for us is great, because we get to go back and see what's happening with the topic. And this one on miniaturization was great fun to write, and thank you very much for your time here. And for Cardio Source World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.